Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. Let's suppose you have a patient and you want to have an easy, effective way to deliver a drug to a specific part of their body, and you're going to use an electrical stimulation modality to do that. What is your go-to for drug delivery? Iontophoresis is transcutaneous drug delivery to a specific tissue. So what it allows us to do is use an electrical current to drive a drug through the skin to a specific tissue. So let's suppose, for example, we wanted to deliver some drug, for whatever reason, to the biceps brachii muscle. The obvious question is, why wouldn't we just take the drug orally, or even intravenously? Well, anytime we take a drug like that, the drug goes to all tissues, right? Because when we take a drug orally, it goes through the GI tract and goes to the blood, and then the blood takes it all throughout the body. It's going to go to the biceps, it's going to go to the heart, it's going to go to the... Uh, to the kidneys, the brain potentially, it can go anywhere, right? But iontophoresis allows us to drive that drug only to a specific tissue that we want. And not only that, it can get there with a higher concentration because it's not being distributed elsewhere. That's the benefit of iontophoresis. So down here at the bottom is a nice table that has some common drugs or chemicals that we can use with iontophoresis. So acetate, calcium, chlorine. The most common one that you're gonna see used is dexamethasone. Now with any of these drugs or chemicals or whatnot, it's important to know the charge of that chemical. And if you're not a chemistry expert, well, you can certainly look that up in a table. So we're gonna be talking mostly about dexamethasone in this video. Dexamethasone, its polarity or its charge is negative. Okay. So dexamethasone is actually packaged as dexamethasone phosphate. If you just type in dexamethasone, you won't get this exact chemical structure. It's actually dexamethasone phosphate. You can see these two negative charges up here. So overall, this chemical has a negative charge. And the reason you need to know the charge of the chemical that you're iontophoresing is because it dictates which electrode you put the chemical on. So whatever the charge of the chemical is, negative or positive, you put it on the electrode of the same charge. So with the electrodes, there's going to be a cathode and there's going to be an anode. The cathode is negatively charged, and for most systems, it's the black electrode, or at least it's hooked up to the black wire. And this red electrode, or hooked up to the red wire, is the positive electrode and the anode, although you'll want to make sure that that is consistent with the system that you're using. In any case, dexamethasone here is negatively charged. So I'm going to have a dexamethasone solution. I'm going to take up some of that solution with this syringe right here, and then I'm going to empty that solution from the syringe onto this electrode. Why the negative one? Because this chemical is negatively charged. So negative charged drug goes on the cathode, the negatively charged electrode. Then I just need to figure out where to place this electrode. So let's suppose I have a patient who has a tendonitis of the long head of biceps brachii tendon. So the tendon of biceps brachii long head is approximately right here. So that's where I'm going to treat. That's where I'm going to place this electrode with my dexamethasone. And then the other electrode, which is the opposite charge, is just going to be placed at a distance maybe two or three electrode widths away from this electrode. So I could probably place it on the arm right there. Again, I could place this electrode right here, but if you have a female patient, you're not going to put it there for obvious reasons. So generally, the arm is going to be a safe bet right there. So these electrodes have wires. The wires are hooked up to a machine, right? And I flip on the machine. That begins the iontophoresis. Now, my dexamethasone here is negatively charged, and it's originally, or initially, on the negative electrode. So what happens when I turn on the machine and begin this? Well, I'm going to create a voltage between the negative electrode and the positive electrode, meaning that anything that's negatively charged is going to be repelled and moved away from the negative electrode and towards the positive electrode. What that basically means is that the dexamethasone will actually be repelled from the negative electrode, and when it moves through the skin, it's going to potentially reach that tendon of the long head of biceps brachii. 
Now, one thing about iontophoresis is that you cannot use this to deliver the drug to deeper tissues. It has to be something that's more superficial. So this long head of biceps brachii tendon is superficial enough in order to get the drug to it. Um, if you're in the low back and you're looking at, let's say, quadratus lumborum, that's a deep muscle and you're not gonna be able to use iontophoresis to get a drug to a deep structure. It has to be superficial, so something within maybe a few millimeters of the surface of the skin. If we had a positive drug and we were doing the same thing on the biceps tendon, I'd put the positive electrode here and the negative electrode down there, okay? So hopefully the setup makes sense to you. But is it just enough to put up the electrodes with the drug on it and turn the machine on? No, we of course have to program the machine, okay? So programming the machine depends on whether the drug is on the cathode or whether it's on the anode. And remember, negative drugs go on the cathode, which is the negative electrode, and positive drugs go on the anode, which is the positive electrode. Now, the cathodic and the anodic electrodes have what's called a maximum current density. This is a given value that is a constant for that electrode. Okay. Cathodes or cathodic electrodes have a maximum current density of 0.5 milliamps per square centimeter. That is just a number that you have to memorize for the cathode. The anodic electrode has a max current density of 1.0 milliamps per square centimeter. Again, just a number that you have to memorize for the anode. The reason you need to know the maximum current density is because there's also a maximum safe current intensity. To get this intensity, you multiply the max current density times the surface area of the electrode. And whatever number you get for this maximum safe current intensity, you can use that value, you can use less than it, but you cannot use more than it because this is the maximum safe current intensity. I don't have the word safe written there. Then the dosage of the treatment is the intensity of the treatment times the total time in minutes of the treatment. The total duration of the treatment should be no more than 30 minutes, so 30 minutes or less. And the dose that you determine should be between 40 to 80 milliamp minutes. This is the units of the dosage. So let's actually look at an example of this to get a better understanding. So let's suppose we want to transcutaneously deliver dexamethasone phosphate to the biceps long head tendon. And we're given that the electrodes are six square centimeters. So, the first step is to determine the chemical charge of our drug that we're delivering. Well, it's dexamethasone phosphate, and we already determined that that drug had a negative charge. Then we want to determine the electrode on which we're putting that dexamethasone solution. So it had a negative charge, so we put it on the negative electrode, which is the cathode. Then we want to determine the maximum safe current density and the maximum safe current intensity. Well, the density is a given. If we're using the cathode, then our maximum safe current density is 0.5 milliamps per square centimeter. Remember, to get the maximum safe current intensity, we take that value and multiply by the surface area of the electrode. So the maximum safe current density, which is a given for a cathode, is 0.5 milliamps per square centimeter. I then multiply that times the surface area of the electrode, which is six square centimeters. Six times a half is three. And since the square centimeter units cancel, our maximum safe current intensity is three milliamps. Now, given that this is the maximum safe current intensity, I can use three milliamps in my treatment. I can use two, but I cannot use four, okay? This is the maximum. The next step is to determine the treatment duration. So if my dosage is the intensity times the time, then my total duration is just the dose divided by the intensity, okay? So what does my dose need to be? Well, the dose just needs to be between 40 and 80 milliamp minutes. So a good bet is to use the number right in the middle there, which is 60 milliamp minutes. That's what I'm gonna use for my dose, 60 milliamp minutes. And then let's suppose I just use that three milliamp intensity. And so I divide the dose by the intensity, 60 milliamp minutes divided by three milliamps, and that gets me a duration of 20 minutes. Is this a valid or safe treatment? Yes, three milliamps does not exceed the maximum safe current intensity, and 20 minutes is within the duration limit. It's less than or equal to 30, so this is actually a good treatment. 
But notice it's not the only treatment I could use, okay? Let's suppose I stick with a dosage of 60 milliamp minutes. I could use a intensity of two milliamps, right? It's less than three. So 60 milliamp minutes divided by two milliamps is 30 minutes. Is this one valid and safe? Yes, two milliamps does not exceed the maximum safe current intensity of three. And 30 minutes is within the duration uh, limit, right? It has to be less than or equal to 30. This is 30, right? But let's suppose I do this, okay? One milliamp, is that within the maximum safe current intensity? Yes, it's less than three. If I take 60 milliamp minutes and divide by one milliamp, I get 60 minutes. Is this okay? No. Why? Because 60 minutes exceeds that duration of 30. And so in this example, these only these first two would be valid treatments. So doing three milliamps for 20 or two milliamps for 30 minutes. So coming back here, once I have my electrodes placed, the electrodes plug into wires, the wires plug into the machine, I program the machine, right? And then I could do three milliamps for 20 minutes. And that would give me a dosage of 60 milliamp minutes, which is right in the middle of that dosage range that we want, okay? So hopefully this gave you a good overview of iontophoresis and how it's actually performed. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.